Hello everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, your friendly neighborhood observer of all things human. They say I have a deadpan delivery. Personally, I'm just proud I deliver anything on time these days. But enough about me. And I'm Alara Skye, the comic brainiac who doesn't mind dropping the occasional scientific term if it means you'll leave here both laughing and learning. I plan to dazzle you with my impeccable wit and, if necessary, the random colon fact. So buckle up, dear listeners. We're diving deep into your gut. Didn't think you'd sign up for that today, did you? Our topic for this episode might sound like something you'd find in a chemistry set, or maybe an alien life form. It's called beauty rate. And yes, it's spelled with a Y, which makes it automatically cooler than all those everyday I words. Right, because if you're going to be a molecule, might as well have some style. Now, beauty rate is one of those short-chain fatty acids, SCFAs for those who enjoy acronyms. The idea here is that beauty rate plays a major role in fueling your colon cells. It's like the premium gasoline your large intestine never knew it needed. I'm still stuck on short-chain fatty acid. It sounds like a band name. Now performing the short-chain fatty acids. But apparently, this stuff is more important than just a quirky moniker. It's produced by our gut bacteria when they ferment certain fibers. That's right, folks. Gas production can be a sign of your gut doing something beneficial. Bet you never thought you'd cheer on fermentation, did you? We do cheer on wine fermentation, so why not the colon version? When your gut bacteria break down dietary fiber, they produce this beauty rate. Then your colon cells slurp it up like they've just discovered their favorite milkshake. Some researchers say these cells rely on beauty rate for up to 80% of their energy needs, which makes them quite the connoisseurs of the SCFA menu. So if you ever find your colon writing a personal ad, it might read, single colonocyte seeking significant beauty rate, must be high fiber. That's how we do gut humor here, very refined. This might be our niche, gut humor all day long. But in seriousness, beauty rate helps keep that gut lining in tip-top shape. It supports something fancy called tight junction proteins. Picture them as bouncers at the cell club deciding what gets to pass and what stays out. Beauty rate helps those bouncers stay on the job, protecting the gut barrier from letting in the riffraff. So basically, your colon has a bouncer, and beauty rate helps that bouncer do its job. It's like the friend who buys the bouncer coffee to keep him alert. If these tight junctions get slack, all sorts of trouble can ensue, right? Exactly. If those junctions doze off, you might end up with an overly permeable gut, meaning things could slip into your bloodstream that really shouldn't. But when your colon cells metabolize butyrate, they lower oxygen levels in your gut. Suddenly, your beneficial anaerobic bacteria can party, multiplying and producing more SCFAs. It's like a helpful bacterial feedback loop with matching t-shirts. I'm imagining a conga line of microbes. This is the carnival of life, only it's in the depths of our intestines. And that's not even the weirdest part. We should talk about how you actually get more beauty rate, because apparently, it's not as simple as wishing on a star. Fairy godmothers aren't in the beauty rate business, unfortunately. The primary root, fiber. We're talking about the kind you find in whole foods, like fruits, veggies, legumes, and whole grains. The fiber goes down your digestive tract largely untouched, like an intrepid traveler passing through uncharted territory, until it reaches your colon. There, certain bacteria feast, and voila, you get beauty rate. You say whole grains, and I feel obligated to mention that's a big difference from processed grains. Sorry to break it to anyone who might be eyeing that sugary cereal box and thinking, fiber? Close enough? Might be time to reconsider. Absolutely. The word whole is key, but it's not just about fiber. There's also a lifestyle component. Hydration, exercise, sleep, it all ties into gut health. If you're dehydrated, the fiber in your diet can't do its job properly. If you're inactive, your gut might move at the pace of an old turtle. And if you're short on sleep, your friendly microbes might stage a small revolt. So we're basically telling everyone to live the lifestyle their mom told them to. Drink water, eat your fruits and veggies, sleep a full night, and maybe do a brisk walk once in a while. Revolutionary. It might not be new, but it works. Another interesting point is that certain fats, like the processed vegetable oils high in linoleic acid, can shift your gut microbes in ways that reduce butyrate production. So if your diet is swimming in corn oil and soybean oil, that might be messing with your intestinal carnival. I appreciate that we're calling it a carnival. It makes it sound more festive than bacterial environment. But yes, moderation in fats, and possibly skipping the processed ones, could help keep that precious butyrate supply on track. And there's also this business about introducing fiber gradually, correct? Right. If someone's been living on cheese puffs and decides to start pounding down raw broccoli, the gut is going to raise a white flag in surrender. You have to ease your way in. A slow, steady increase in fiber gives your bacteria time to adapt, so you're not dealing with bloating and enough gas to float a hot air balloon. That's good advice. Now, let's talk myths. There are apparently a few misconceptions floating around about beauty rate. One is the notion that you can just pop a fiber supplement and call it a day. If life were that easy, we'd all be sipping fiber drinks in place of coffee. But a single-type fiber supplement can't replicate the diversity you get from whole foods. 
Whole foods provide not only various types of fiber, but also micronutrients and phytochemicals that your gut flora appreciate. Another rumor is that all high-fat diets ruin your gut. But the story is more nuanced, right? The type of fat matters. Good fats can still be part of a gut-friendly meal plan. Exactly. A bit of grass-fed butter or coconut oil doesn't automatically tank your colon's beauty rate production. It's the processed fats that often create an unbalanced environment. Let's not demonize all fats in one sweep. As with so many things, context and quality matter. Also, some people think probiotics directly produce butyrate, but not all probiotic strains do that. It's more that certain strains can encourage the environment where beneficial butyrate producing microbes thrive, but it's not a direct infusion of butyrate itself. Precisely. You can't just throw random probiotic capsules down the hatch and expect them to churn out buckets of butyrate. That's not their job description, but the right strains can help set the stage for the beneficial bacteria that do produce it. So if people want to increase butyrate naturally, we're looking at dietary changes. More diverse fiber from whole fruits, veggies, legumes, and whole grains, plus an overall healthy lifestyle. What if someone has a really compromised gut, though? In that case, they may need to avoid certain fibers temporarily and focus on healing their gut first. If your gut lining is inflamed, it might freak out at large amounts of fiber. So you'd start with gut healing strategies, reducing processed fats, managing stress, and all that good stuff. Then, slowly, you begin to reintroduce different fiber sources. Let's see if we can address some frequently asked questions. For instance, can people just supplement with butyrate directly? Supplements exist, sure. But realistically, it's often more cost-effective and sustainable to grow your own butyrate by feeding your gut bacteria the right foods. That's the beauty of Synergy. You feed them, they feed you. Next FAQ. Does cooking destroy fiber? Some folks wonder if they lose that precious prebiotic punch when they steam or roast their veggies. Cooking can alter the structure, but it generally doesn't annihilate the fiber. In fact, for some vegetables, light cooking can make them easier on your digestive system, which might actually improve fermentation. Another question. Are there any surefire signs you're low in butyrate? It's not like there's a home butyrate test you can pick up at the corner store. But if someone's diet is consistently low in fiber and they're having gut troubles, they might not be making as much butyrate as they could. Upping that fiber gradually is a good place to start. And not all fiber is created equal, correct? Exactly. Different fibers have different fermentation profiles. Some produce more acetate, some produce more butyrate. That's why a varied diet of whole plant foods is recommended. Think of it like an orchestra. You want multiple instruments playing together, not just a single kazoo. Let's zoom in on a few practical strategies. For starters, focusing on whole plant foods is key. Berries, apples, legumes, these are fairly simple to incorporate, and you don't have to go from zero to a pound of beans overnight. If you don't want to clear a room, maybe add small servings to your meals. Also, a reminder, hydration is your friend. If you're eating more fiber and you're not drinking enough water, things might stall out. Nothing like a high fiber traffic jam in your gut to ruin your day. So keep that water bottle handy. Good call. Another piece is movement. Even moderate exercise can help keep your gut on a healthy schedule. The colon appreciates a little bit of physical activity. It's like rocking a baby to sleep, only less adorable and more, well, let's just say it's important. So important. Then there's sleep. We love binging shows as much as the next person, but if you're constantly sleep deprived, your gut might stage a protest. Aim for seven to eight hours so your microbial buddies can maintain their beauty rate producing factories. I can just picture them down there wearing little construction hats, working the late shift. We can't keep building your SCFAs if you don't give us rest, Ethan. Maybe that's what my gut is trying to tell me at 2 a.m. It's possible. They get pretty vocal about these things. Another factor, watch out for those antibiotics. They can wipe out beneficial bacteria along with the bad. That's sometimes necessary, but after a round of antibiotics, it's wise to help repopulate your gut with a healthy variety of microbes. Things like kefir, yogurt, kimchi, or sauerkraut can help. For people who are new to fermented foods, I recommend going slow. Otherwise, you might experience an over-enthusiastic fermentation desk party in your digestive tract, leading to, well, let's say you might want to clear your schedule. Let's not forget that incremental improvements add up. You don't have to overhaul your entire diet in one day. Start with an extra serving of veggies, switch out refined grains for whole grains, and maybe replace that soda with water. Every little step can encourage a healthier microbial balance and more butyrate production. Now, let's circle back to the star of our show. Beauty rate keeps the gut lining strong, it helps with energy for colon cells, and it creates a favorable environment for the bacteria we actually want hanging around. All hail beauty rate, the unsung hero of the colon. Indeed. Without beauty rate, we'd lose a major source of energy for our colon cells, and that could lead to a whole cascade of issues with our gut barrier and overall digestive comfort. It's amazing how something you can't see, and might not have even heard of until now, plays such a critical role in daily health. I suppose we could all take a moment to appreciate the synergy of nature. We feed the microbes, they feed us butyrate, our colon stays happy. 
Everyone wins. It's a beautiful, if slightly bizarre, partnership. That's the gist. Our gut microbes are basically tiny employees working around the clock to maintain our well-being, at least when we give them the right tools. Good fiber, good rest, fewer processed fats, moderate exercise, and we're setting the stage for a beauty rate bonanza. And let's keep in mind that beauty rate isn't the only SCFA in town. There's also acetate and propionate, but beauty rate hogs the spotlight because it's such a VIP for colon cells. If your colon is the dance floor, beauty rate is the DJ dropping all the best tracks. I love the mental image of your large intestine as a raging nightclub, with beauty rate pumping the tunes and the beneficial bacteria getting down. Another day in the life of the digestive tract, right? Absolutely. Meanwhile, the tight junctions are the bouncers, ensuring only the right molecules get in. It's a well-oiled operation, or well-fermented operation, I should say. The next time you chomp down on a crisp apple or add lentils to your soup, just remember you're fueling this intricate system. It's kind of like feeding a pet. Only the pet is inside you and numbers in the trillions. That's a lot of responsibility, but also a lot of potential for better health. And with that, dear listeners, we hope you've gained some new appreciation for the wonders of butyrate. I know I have. If nothing else, I'll never look at a plate of broccoli the same way again. Instead of dread, I'll think, this is a VIP pass for my colon cells. That's a good reframe. And on that note, we'll wrap up our conversation on beauty rate and its starring role in your gut's daily drama. If you enjoyed this discussion, or if you just like the phrase, short-chain fatty acids, be sure to tune in again. There's plenty more gut intrigue where this came from. You've been listening to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom with me, Ethan Foster, your guide to comedic observation, and Alara Skye, the intellect armed with zingers. We appreciate you lending us your ears and your colon for this chat. Until next time, stay curious, stay hydrated, and consider your gut microbes in your next meal. Trust me, they're already thinking about you. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.